I beg to move that this House do now adjourn. The question is that this House do now adjourn. Michael Meacher. Uh, I should say immediately that uh, I have been informed that the Minister of State at whom this uh, debate was directed has uh, very unfortunately been held up at Glasgow Airport because his plane developed engine trouble. Uh, obviously I'm very sorry about that, uh, both for him uh, and for me, uh, but I suspect uh, that the speech to be delivered by the Parliamentary Under Secretary at uh, last minute stand-in won't diverge very dramatically from what he himself uh, would probably have delivered. Uh, I'm very grateful um, to have the opportunity uh, of an adjournment debate to raise this matter, although I should say uh, straight away that I very much regret uh, that it's been necessary at all. Uh, in all my parliamentary experience over 40 years, it is unprecedented for a minister to refuse point blank to receive a delegation on a matter of acute public interest and importance from representatives of a major section of the population uh, who have been targeted, in their view, uh, extremely unjustly by government policy. Uh, on the 31st of January, I wrote to the Secretary of State asking for a delegation uh, to meet him in his office to discuss the reforms in the work capability assessment uh, of disabled people that urgently need to be made. Uh, I reminded him uh, in my letter of the debate in the House on ATOS, uh, which I initiated on the 17th of January. Uh, which in my view was one of the best debates uh, I have experienced in this House for a long time. It was free from rancour and partisanship, but it was critical, detailed, passionate and well focused on the need for reform. Nearly 30 members spoke, and without exception on all sides of the House. Whilst recognising that there had been some improvements, they were deeply critical that the fundamental structures still remained deeply flawed, causing profound upset, distress, indignation, anger and a very real sense of helplessness, in many cases making sick people even sicker uh, as a result of anxiety and fear. Uh, and although uh, many members uh, targeted Atos Healthcare, the French company to whom the assessments were outsourced, it was notable that not a single member from any part of the House defended the DWP position over the descriptors, the regulations and the guidance handed down by the government to this private firm. These were the reasons, Mr Deputy Speaker, I sought this delegation and frankly it never occurred to me that it would not be readily and promptly granted by the Minister. However, not having had a reply to my letter at any time in February, throughout the whole of that month, I put down a PQ asking uh, when the Minister was going to reply to me. Uh, within 24 hours, uh, after having waited over five weeks for the reply, uh, I did receive a reply from the Minister of State. And it emerged that when I spoke to the Secretary of State earlier this week, he had never actually seen my letter. The Minister of State's letter, which I've got here, said bluntly uh, that his diary did not permit him uh, the opportunity to see this delegation, which I take to be civil services for a flat no. Uh, I was frankly taken aback, so I sought out uh, the minister in the lobby, and as soon as he saw me, he said, I'm not seeing you. And when I protested, he repeated it three times, I'm not seeing you. When I insisted that this was unprecedented and totally unacceptable, he finally said, I'm not seeing Spartacus. And again, he repeated it three times. That is the basis for my seeking this debate today. 
Spartacus is a group initially of hundreds uh, and now of thousands of sick and disabled people whose lives have been dramatically affected uh, by the welfare changes and who have come together as a form of loose collective or call it what you like to share their own narrative uh, with a wider public. Now crucially this work is, and I have read it through in detail, is evidence-based, uses the DWP's own figures and reports whenever possible, has never been challenged on accuracy, either by the DWP or by the wider public, and aims always to provide a calm, credible and plausible response to the government's proposals, highlighting uh, where they do feel proposals uh, will have a damaging effect on sick or disabled people and promulgating that uh, to the wider public. Now the movement initially crystallised uh, around the so-called Spartacus Report or Responsible Reform uh, which set out an evidence-based analysis showing that the DWP had misled the public by claiming broad support uh, for the abolition of the disability living allowance and replacing it with a new benefit, personal independence payments, when in fact there was almost no public support at all. On the launch day, literally hundreds of thousands took part and the report trended at number one or two on Twitter all day. Since then, the report has been widely used and quoted uh, by the Work and Pension Select Committee uh, the Joint Committee on Human Rights and in several parliamentary exchanges in this chamber. I think that says enough about the auspices and the credibility of this group. In addition, the Spartacus Group has produced, uh, as I've said, a detailed and lengthy review of the Work Capability Assessments Procedure based on the lived experience, which are set out at great length, of 70 or more claimants with additional comments from MPs, the courts, professional bodies and medical professionals, along with the findings of several freedom of information requests. Now in the light of all this, I find it inconceivable that a minister would refuse to meet a representative or representatives from a group who have a very powerful case to make, one which is strongly supported by hundreds of thousands of sick and disabled people in this country at this time, and whose record shows that they have always argued their case, and I repeat again, with evidence-based rigour and well-documented analysis. And it's not as if ministers have not met members of Spartacus. They have, in the last year or two, repeatedly. Kalia Franklin, one of the persons I named for the delegation, met the Secretary of State at the Conservative Party conference last year, and I understand uh, that it was a productive and courteous meeting, as I would expect it to be. She also met uh, the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State last year, and again, I believe, uh, that the discussions um, on disability and working were fruitful. Sue Marsh, another leading member of the Spartacus Group, whom I included in uh, the delegation, discussed the ESA and work capability assessments with the former Minister of State for 45 minutes before they appeared on Newsnight together on the 12th of January last year. And both these disability activists have debated with the former Parliamentary Under Secretary of State numerous times on Radio 5 Live, on Radio 4 and BBC TV. So I simply cannot understand how the current Minister of State can conceivably, on any defensible arguments, refuse this delegation. Now effectively, Spartacus set out to engage with politicians. That's what they wanted to do, to create a movement with a credible voice that would be scrupulous about aiming uh, for reasonable change, setting out reasonable demands that they believe are achievable. Yes, they do focus 
uh, on the most damaging aspects of welfare reform and explain why they are harmful. They might be expected to do that, but they also offer alternatives that they believe will work and are costed wherever possible. And for the minister to deny the engagement that they themselves want seems, I think, bizarre and perverse. Now, over the next few weeks, Spartacus tell me that they will be producing a clear set of demands to move ESA forward. And key to this will be implementing all, and I underline all, of the Harrington reforms now. Frankly, three years is long enough, and Harrington himself said in his year three review that progress had been too slow. Now, of course, in trials where all of the changes are implemented, the daily rate of assessments will fall uh, from something like 8 to 11 at the present time per day uh, to perhaps 4 or 5. But crucially, this has led to nearly 100% accurate decisions. And that is an extremely important conclusion to draw. Now, on that basis, I hope very much that the ministers will reconsider and agree to meeting this delegation uh, that I've set out. Yes, I'd be very glad to give way to my oh. honourable friend. The Spartacus report was uh, brought together with a lot of uh, academic advice based upon Brunel University, my local university as well. Yeah. And the whole purpose of that was constructive engagement with government to improve the system okay. and to look at basic reforms. I think they thought that they would enter into a dialogue with government on a consistent basis, not to actually have the ministerial dialogue undermines the whole exercise. Well, my honourable well, friend, that's uh, exactly right. That is, that is the whole point. This is not to abuse the government, it is to engage in a rational, thoughtful and listening dialogue in which both sides are listening to each other. Now, of course, uh, I realise uh, that I could leave out Spartacus. Uh, from my request of his delegation, but I'm not prepared to do that because I don't believe that ministers should have the right to pick and choose uh, who is going to be included in delegations that they receive. And it's not as if uh, Spartacus members were rude or offensive uh, or didn't have a powerful case to make. I would understand it in those circumstances, but they are in fact rational, plausible, eager to engage, and with an extremely compelling message that ministers ought to listen to. And I very much hope uh, that the minister concerned uh, with his un highly uncharacteristic defiance and intransigence uh, may change his mind. But my last word is this. If he does not, I shall certainly not leave the matter where it rests at the moment. I will renew my request to the Secretary of State in a letter that I will personally deliver into his hands so that this time round uh, he is actually uh, has it brought to his attention. And I think, and this is my last word, it is really tragic that we are having to have this debate this afternoon, wasting time talking about uh, the composition of a delegation rather than dealing with the real issue that hundreds of thousands of sick and disabled people have been subjected to real hardship, suffering and fear because of the way they have been bitterly mistreated under these regulations. They should be listened to directly and that is what ministers should now respond to. Yeah. Mr Deputy Speaker, the first point I would like to make is that my honourable friend, the Member for Fareham, the Minister for uh, Employment, apologises wholeheartedly for not being here today. Uh, in fact, as the Right Honourable Member for Oldham West uh, said at the start of uh, this debate, that he had been on his way back from Glasgow, from meeting with people in Scotland, uh, work programme providers, uh, and the plane had to turn back because of engine uh, problems. Therefore, he couldn't be here today, so he apologises for that. He did very much want to answer this debate, and I know that the department, at his request, asked if today's date could be rescheduled so he could be here answering this himself, but was told that would not be possible. The only poss uh, person who could withdraw it was uh, the Right Honourable Member for Oldham. However, 
whatsoever. Um, he didn't withdraw the debate, but equally I understand he did not, would not necessarily have had it rescheduled, hence I am here um, very much uh, speaking on behalf of the Minister for um, Employment. Now, the Minister engages uh, widely and continuously with a whole range of people on the work capability assessment. In the last few months alone, he's met with a range of charities, including the National Autistic Society, MENCAP, MIND, the Mental Health Foundation, the Scottish Association for Mental Health, Citizens Advice Bureau, SCOPE, and more. And as I said, he's in Scotland uh, today, earlier on today, meeting with people from the work programme, as well as a range of medical associations, including the Royal College of Psychiatrists, the BMA, the President of the Royal College of Radiologists. Um, all of us regularly correspond with fellow MPs about the work capability assessment and have recently written to all MPs on this matter. And I can confirm that my honourable friend has an extensive correspondence with the honourable members for uh, Rutherglen and Hamilton West, one of the proposed attendees of uh, that meeting. He has responded to almost 100 uh, parliamentary questions from the honourable member, many on the work capability assessment or ATOS over the last six months alone. And we're all grateful for his and others' interest, and we are keen to maintain a constructive dialogue about how we might further improve the work capability assessment. Many meetings, either with stakeholder organisations or individuals, can be challenging. The work capability assessment elicits strong views and isn't always fully understood. On occasion, mistakes have been made, but we're always open to constructive stakeholder engagement and, since taking on his role, he has engaged with organisations that have been critical of the department, even if they have intervened in judicial reviews against the department, and still he has had those meetings. And they give way. I listen to all that she says, and I accept that, but the key point in this debate is why is he not prepared to see Spartacus? Spartacus is, by any standards, a leading organisation of sick and disabled people, supported by thousands. Why is he not prepared to see all of the other organisations, but not Spartacus? And I will get to that point as I uh, fur get further on in, in uh, this debate. Uh, but I think what is key, and what he felt was key, was this constructive uh, dialogue. Uh, the Minister consistently said several things about the work capability assessment since taking up his role, and um, it has to be clear which. Uh, one wouldn't necessarily take from today's debate that actually the work capability assessment was something that he inherited from the previous Labour government. We wouldn't necessarily know that by listening here tonight. And we've been committed to improving it, and we want changes to happen wherever possible in collaboration with the people who know most about it and who are affected by it. In fact, my honourable friend made these points at the debate on the 17th of January, but I think it's worth reiterating them today. And they're the core principles which drive much of the department's work on the work capability assessment and will remain so uh, since taking up office. We've made the work capability assessment a more sensitive and less mechanistic uh, assessment and successfully implemented a number of challenging reforms to the assessment. The independent reviews of the work capability assessment are obviously one of those key drivers for positive change. And Professor Harrington has had extensive interaction with a wide variety of stakeholders, including individuals, lobby organisations, MPs across all parties, and the staff in DW and ATOS affected uh, by the changes resulting from this work. Professor Harrington listened to all of the concerns raised and made recommendations based on the evidence provided and his interpretation was this, that mental health conditions are difficult to assess. Professor Harrington recommended the positioning of mental function champions within ATOS. We have listened and a network of champions is now in place to provide advice and support to other healthcare professionals. Professionals. He also recommended that we put decision makers back at the heart of the system and ensure they are empowered to make independent and considered decisions, which we have done. And Professor Harrington spotted a gap in our
our relationship with clinical experts. I will indeed, but once I've, I've finished this point, so that the point we do we do get it across. Professor Harrington spotted a gap in our relationships with clinical experts. He concluded we weren't consulting them enough on the guidance and training materials used by Atos healthcare professionals. We've responded by putting a process in place to engage with clinical uh, clinical expertise. This is still in its early days, but we are determined to make it work. I could go on, but I will uh, let my honourable uh, uh, the honourable member come in. It's just to say, could she just answer the question? Why not this group? What's wrong with this group? Why specifically this group that the Minister discriminates against? Exactly. I, I appreciate you're keen to get your voice on the record, and as I said, I was coming to that, and the key reason was constructive uh, dialogue. I was setting very much um, uh, this in context of all the people that the Minister for Employment has met, regularly uh, meets, uh, and will continue to do so. And we are determined to carry on this engagement. As the Right Honourable Member ha has raised this point, and I know both, I believe, of the members on the opposite be bench did actually vote for the work capability assessment, uh, and both of which were in the government that voted and created the work capability assessment, and in fact it is this government that is picking up the pieces, having these reviews, and actually making it a far more workable benefit, neither of which has been raised at all today. So, with regard to the letter and the exchanges, I do believe uh, the Right Honourable Member for Oldham West talked about uh, the, the letter and the correspondence. And uh, what I've been handed is actually that letter was uh, replied within the 20 working uh, days. Uh, that is um, Cabinet Office protocol, and that's what I have uh, been told uh, today. And as I said, what is clear is constructive, uh, I will indeed. I realise she's been brought in at the last minute, but that is not correct. My letter was the 31st of January. The letter here from the Minister is the 5th of March. But I'm not bothered about uh, the technicalities of keeping to civil service rules about replies to letter. I want to know why it is that Spartacus has been excluded when all of the other organisations that she has mentioned uh, are being included. She keeps talking about constructive engagement. Why not engage with probably the most effective organisation of all. Well, I will get to that, and I have just had it confirmed that the letter was um, received on the 5th of February, and actually, as I said, the letter was sent out in reply um, on the date that was said. Um, well, actually, the reason why I was mentioning a constructive dialogue and what was important uh, and why uh, the, my hon the Honourable um, Member felt that he was unable to meet with these, this group, I understand uh, that his diary, yes, was under immense pressure and I know he'd reschedule things and he was going to have a meeting. However, he didn't necessarily feel that it was going to be a constructive dialogue because the words that had been used by Spartacus for this was the work capability is a, a statement of political desperation. The process is reminiscent of the medical tribunals that returned shell-shocked and badly wounded soldiers to duty in the First World War or the KV machines the medical commission uh, the Nazis used in the Second World War to play down wounds uh, so that soldiers could be reclassified fit for the Eastern Front. It was for such wording and for such reasons that he felt that there wouldn't be a constructive dialogue and what he was seeking and with the many other people that he had met was not just criticism, you have to take criticism on the chin, but you do need a constructive dialogue to say, well, what do uh, these groups feel could be better? How could we adjust the assessment? Uh, and none of that had ever been forthcoming. For which reason, please allow me to finish the sentence, for which reason he hadn't thus far had this, um, this meeting. However, if there is to be constructive dialogue, if there is to be 
you know, possible, uh, you know, positive outcomes from the meeting, I am sure the honourable member would, my honourable friend, would meet with the group. But I, I think you could understand by the tone with which uh, this was put I I in place, uh, then that wouldn't necessarily, he felt, have been the best way forward. <laughs> got to the explanation. Uh, I could have been given this a lot earlier. Uh, the truth is, uh, the uh, Spartacus report uh, is about 100 pages long, perhaps slightly under 100 pages. The quote which she has given is one sentence in it. I agree it is in strong language. It is the language of exasperation and hurt and anger. But the idea that the minister should refuse to see a delegation simply because of the use of that kind of language is absurd. I mean, politicians are a bit tougher than that. If he disagrees with it, he can speak his own mind to them directly. The point is, they want, and they have engaged constructively, and they expect the minister to respond. I, I do hope then that the right honourable member for Oldham West would refute uh, such language, would himself um, condemn such language in order that uh, they can stop on a, on a sort of clear sort of and um, uh, more open way forward and have a discussion in a positive light with, as I have said, constructive dialogue. And I think that would be a very positive place to start. Uh, these comments that are, are, are odds with Professor, Hamming, um, Professor Harrington himself and he has stated that while there is more to do, the work capability assessment is the right concept and the department can be proud of what it has achieved so far in improving the work capability assessment. Our response to the latest independent review made clear we agree with his views and that we are committed to continue to improve the assessment and I, I believe that all of us can see that that is a positive statement to move forward. I, I won't give way on that point, but we have implemented those. We did take on a very poorly designed assessment from the opposition, from the Labour government, and we have done significant work to get that right. Furthermore, the Spartacus report of the work capability assessment, there are, there are also the People's Review, while reflecting what are clearly strongly held views of a collection of anecdotal accounts, it fails to recognise the improvement made to the work capability assessment since 2010. Order. Mr Macdonald. I know you are frustrated, but you mustn't behave in this manner. Please allow the Minister to yeah, finish yeah. her remarks. Minister. Point of order, Mr Macdonald. Can I apologise to you, Deputy Speaker, for intervening in, in that way, but you can understand the frustration. I've never heard that, uh, that sort of feeble excuse for a Minister not willing to meet people with disabilities. I just think it's outrageous, and I apologise for that. I think the House accepts your apology and hopes now that the Minister will be allowed to finish her remarks in silence. Minister. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I think we all suffer uh, frustration. I do too for having inherited something clearly unworkable that we've had to spend over two years trying to get right and we will continue to get it right and that's what we are doing. So I would ask the honourable gentleman to really concentrate and focus on this debate and what we are doing. Finally, uh, we have also offered the right honourable gentleman whether he would come and have a constructive talk, we've less than a minute left, a constructive talk actually with Atos to meet with and look at what could possibly do and have a constructive talk. I do believe the Right Honourable uh, Member uh, for Oldham West actually declined. Uh, this was an in invitation to discuss the changes to improve this, but the Right Honourable Gentleman dismissed the ATOS invitation as something that will not achieve anything before condemning the work capability assessment and ATOS. So I do believe all of us have something to learn from this. All of us must work together constructively, and that's on both sides of the House. The reason I finished that, the reason I refused that, was because the descriptors, the regulations and the guidance have been passed down to ATOS Healthcare as the Our agents ministers. of the government from DWP. They are the ones who are responsible, not ATOS Healthcare. And the, I suspect we've reached the end of the debate.
then I would say there is much for all of us to learn, whether that is the right honourable member agreeing to meet with Atos and whether it is this department agreeing to meet uh, with Spartacus. But I conclude it must be constructive because I believe, as we all do, we want to get this right for the most vulnerable people in society. The question is that this House do now adjourn. As many as of that, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order, order.